football. And tonight, we've got a star. A man who booted seven goals in a grand final for the Bombers. But then again, it's not too hard to kick seven goals. No. Oh, 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 How many did you kick? Seven. Bomb How <laughs> many times? <laughs> Only once. Plus <laughs> a man who came off the bench in a grand final is now part of grand final history, one of the greats of did the game. Did you do that? Never came off the bench, Bob. Did you ever play on the bench, Bob? Ever mm. play in the reserves? You're joking, are you? <laughs> you ever play seconds, Bobby? Did they EJ, play? Never, EJ never played seconds. No, Did I you? never played in the seconds. Okay. Never been on the bench. Never had the coach put up his finger and say. Never been on the bench? No. No, John, yeah. never record. came out and dragged you off the ground? What a never. great record. You must have been a superstar, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> but I tell you what, I've never seen Bobby oh, so yeah. upset as we were at the back when I said oh. the name of our very oh, first guest okay. because Bobby I claims... Have to go, actually. Bobby claims oh. he'd still be coaching Geelong if it wasn't for our very first guest, who joins us, and it's Ted Fordham of the Essendon Football Club. Ted, welcome to Grumpy Old Man. Thanks, Kev. Thanks. Now, go on, Bob. Go on, tell us. Why are you upset? grumpy about, Bobby? Do, Bobby. Come on, get grumpy. What's upset about? <laughs> I took over coach in 60. We were last. We won the night premiership. We played in two preliminary finals. I'll jot them We down. won the day premiership. Oh, we finished third. We finished second. Yep. And I went in at the end of 19... 65 to the meeting, you know, expecting to say, oh, we've had a pretty good year or something like that. The first thing they said, we're going to advertise for a new coach. <laughs> oh, who, was the, who was the president back that in those days? Day? Jack Bob? Jennings. Jack, genial Jack. Genial Jack. What happened was... <laughs> Teddy. There we go. The there we go. Teddy football what did club. Teddy get involved in Teddy used to be full forward and Kenny Fraser used to be sent up forward. And without being too hard... Peter Walker could handle Kenny Fraser pretty well. And Roy West wasn't bad on you, was he? He was good. That's right, he was he good. Was good. <laughs> and the smelly coach of Essendon well, he, switched them. Uh, and he came out the centre forward. <laughs> and Fraser went well, to full forward. Hold on, Bob, coach. couldn't you just switch him with him? Yeah, I one. said, no, my fellas, I'll beat them, don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> there were seven goals before we started. <laughs> oh, fair dinkum, Bob. So, oh. Bobby, you got out coached oh. because... John Coleman <laughs> switched Ted Ford in the centre half that's forward right. and Kenny Fraser the full forward. I was out coach. And that three off balance. Well, he wouldn't switch it, would he? Go on, Teddy. What you he was just, just too smart for you, Wolf. That's right. That's right. <laughs> he, Coley knew he had your measure yeah. every time we played Geelong. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, you know what he used to call you, don't you? The Pussycats and all this <laughs> and the handbag <laughs> brigade. and He used to give it to you. Yeah. Uh, but, um, who would you coach, Ted? John Coleman. John, John Coleman. Coleman. John yeah. Coleman. And I used to go away with Coley and all the interstate trips and we'd have our photos yeah. taken together, <laughs> and when it had come out in the paper, Honey Coleman. <laughs> Chopped straight off, I was. Yeah, Bob. Oh, you were a glory hunter, Bob. Yeah. That's what I was. <laughs> Ted, but he was a marvellous fellow, wasn't he? Uh, he's a great man. Yeah, great man. He was. Well, we'll talk about Coleman, but uh, tell us about Ted Fordham growing up in Essendon, and obviously playing like a lot of those great Essendon players did, played with uh, the Baptist, Essendon Baptist, because so many great players came Essendon from... Essendon Baptist. Essendon Baptist. Yeah, oh, I was a very good church-going good church I used to have to go to church parade once a month, Bob, in those yeah. days, and then I was eligible to play with the Baps. <laughs> but as Kevin said, we had a great side. We had... I was a midfielder, as yeah. they call them these days. An on-baller. An on-baller, yeah. You are a bit heavy for that, Ted. I was pretty slim and athletic oh, in those days. Oh, okay. And I had Ken Fraser as our centre half forward. Oh, well, Ken, he'd be a good church goer. Then we had uh, Ronnie Evans. Uh, you know, Ron is, um, you know, we used to call him Glaxo in those days. Uh, mm. He was full forward. Yes. And I used to just get the ball and stab past it to Frizzer and he'd stab past it to Evo and... <laughs> I think on one particular occasion Evo kicked 29 goals in a match. <laughs> And, and as I say, it was from the ball was coming up so well from the midfield. From the <laughs> midfield, <laughs> that's right. That's but it was a dream. Uh, we uh, spoke to Ken uh, Fraser about this, uh, and they used to just kick the ball in their in their driveway, and you know, just sort of between the garage mm. and, and the house. And and he was saying that you know the dream of all the local kids were was was to get down to Essendon and uh, you know play football, and maybe the great Dick Reynolds was coach at the time, just to go down there to Windy Hill and play. Yeah, well, Essendon was, have always been a strong, you know, they always had a yeah. strong following. And, That's right. You know, when I was growing up, I always, you know, we couldn't afford a leather football in those days and we used to wrap the paper up and <laughs> tie it up with string and kick torps with it and so forth. That's how I became such a good kick, Bob. You, you'd realise <laughs> that. Um, but, no, all you wanted to do was play at Essendon. I never ever thought I'd realise that dream. And um, maybe if Coleman hadn't become coach, I don't think I would have. Because I wasn't one of sort of uh, Dick Reynolds' men. Oh, yeah. He, um, Dick's, yeah. Dick, 
had his type of player and I just yeah. wasn't one of Dick's men, but I sort of slotted in pretty well with John Coleman and um, I owe him my career because um, so it was him that, that sort of made me. You come right up through the system though? Like was it, did they have like 19 reserves, seniors? Or yes, I, I played one year in the under-19s, only played four games. I did national service that year and okay. I used to go AWL from Pucker Punyal and play <laughs> football. And, Got locked up for a week and did fire, fire duty because I shouldn't have been away. But I only played four games. We played a grand final in 59. Then I played one year in the twos, or the seconds, as we called it. And Coley took over in 61 and that we went it. on from there. I was in and out of the side for a few years, but finished up, I made it. Mm. He, he must have had an, an immediate impact because you won, you won the flag in 1962. Mm -hmm. 1962, the Bombers won the flag, and also in 65. We'll talk about that in a moment because that was a great final series. But tell us about the type of coach he was because obviously Dick Reynolds didn't like Ted Fordham. Why did John Coleman like Ted Fordham? Well, I'll give myself a pat on the back. I think I, think I used to have a go. That's, that's the yeah. sort of player he wanted. He wanted the player to have a go and, and give his all. And John had the ability to coach players Singularly, if that's a way to put it, he he, he knew every he knew everything about everyone. Mm. And um, was he ahead of his time? I think he was. And if it hadn't have been for his illness, I think John Coleman would have coached for a long, long, yeah. long time and would have been one of the most successful coaches that football would have. Plus seen. the fact he was tough and strong too, wasn't he? Oh yeah, you know, you probably saw him the day he ran out on the ground. That's he was right. going to belt Johnny Devine yeah, from that's the right. coaches bench. That's the sort of guy he was. He loved his players, absolutely mm. loved them, and. I don't know if you know if you remember the day Johnny Devine decked Jack Clark in the forward pocket. It was That's the best right. forearm jolt you'd ever seen. They used to go on all the time, yeah. but John was off that bench and out onto the ground, and I think the police restrained him in those days. So did you play in the 62 grand final with SM1? No, no, I didn't play in the 62 grand final. I was emergency. As a, emergency, oh, emergency in those days. Yeah. And um, I was stripped ready to play at 20 past two on that particular day. Yeah. yeah and sprung a leak who injured his ankle on the Thursday night, they gave him a fitness test in the room. And to this day, actually I had lunch with Sprunger on Sunday. Yep. They give him a fitness test and to this day he said I was kicking, well he had a bad ankle and had this big medicine ball that he was kicking around. He said, little did they realise I was kicking it with me good ankle. <laughs> 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 so you were stripped ready to go 10 I was stripped ready to play, yep. And uh, 10 minutes before the game started they said, we're going to play Leakey, and he was probably nearly the best on the ground. Was he? Yeah, yeah they took him off in the last quarter, and uh, but he did. He played a super game. And, uh, yeah, so that was my story of the 62 grand final. I was and there until 10 minutes before the game. Well, right. it must be a great thrill when you think back. You, you played with Ron Evans as a kid, and also Kenny Fraser mm -hmm. in junior football with the uh, Essendon Baptist. And then, of course, you go to to Essendon, and you're playing with Kenny Fraser and the likes of Ron Evans. I mean, it was it was great to come through with those guys. Oh, it was. I, in one one particular Saturday. There was seven Essendon Baps and John's boys in the same, in the one senior side mm -hmm. at Essendon. There was Ken Forge, there was Lindsay McGee, Graham Johnson, uh, myself, Frizzer, I think it was Evo, and Don McKenzie was the other one too. Don McKenzie came from the Essendon oh. Baps and John's. Don so McKenzie doesn't appear as a clear <laughs> Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> no, he's, yeah, you're probably right there, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you move to full forward? Because obviously as a, as a younger player, you, you played mainly as a midfield player. Yeah, I moved to full forward in 19... Might have been in 65. 65, it was 65, about the middle of the year. Coley came up to me and he said, he said, how do you think you'd go at 65? And I said, oh, you know, I said, probably go all right. At full forward? At full, full forward. forward. Yeah. And um, we played South Melbourne at Essendon my first game at full forward and I kicked seven goals. And uh, from then on, I, um, I sort of progressed from there and I had a great final series. I think I kicked 16 or 17 goals during the finals. Um, and then in 66, I, I had a pretty good year. I kicked 76 for the year, which in those days wasn't a bad number. You were a fairly weighty fellow at full forward. Yeah, I was a bit big around the hips, yeah. uh, Bob. I, yeah, that was, they used to come in handy. Yeah, that's yeah, right. I was, I was and, weighty. And a good yes. kick. Oh, beautiful kick. Oh, well, beautiful I, didn't, kick. I didn't want to say Barry that. Barry Davis right tried to... Did he not right footer, was he? <coughs> natural right footer? I was a right footer, yeah. Did you go yeah. both sides of the body? Oh, you had to? in a no. fashion. In a yeah. fashion. Yeah. yeah. yeah when, fashion. when you say you had big hips, like some of the greatest full forwards of all time, and Wade, he had big hips, yeah. and Peter Hudson was sensational yeah. just yeah. using yeah. his... Huge back yeah. Is that what Jason you done? more body work than a on lead full forward? Yeah, or? I was. Yeah, I, well, I did. Yeah, I was a leading full forward too, but... Um, 
you know, I could hold my own. I, I used to play at about 14 and a half stone, I think, mm, in those yeah, days. Yeah. And, and I was a bit like Wadey. You could stand there and you could just yeah, give them a nudge with the hip right. and, um, yeah, just get enough, get them out of the way enough. And You had some good midfielders too to help you with a bit of supply, didn't you? Well, they weren't bad, were they? Like <laughs> Clarkie and Johnny Burke yeah, and Bert, uh, yeah. Barry Davis coming on a, off a half back flag. Were you Mitchell yeah. there? And, Huey. you know, you can't leave Alec Gepis out, the can you? you know, I didn't say anything about He'll Alec. About yeah. The oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the cooker. Yeah, the cooker was the only man I ever saw do a blind turn on a football field and there was no one there. There was no one there. That's right. <laughs> That's right. True. That's right. Yeah. True. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 The white anklets too, didn't he, Cooker? Oh, definitely. Had to, yeah, he had to have him so many inches up above his boots. <laughs> it made him look better. So yeah. to play full forward. So if John Common comes to you and says, "Listen, I'm going to put you to full forward, Ted." Where, what happened to Ron Evans? Uh, did you replace Ron Evans? No. This is the man that kicked what uh, 29 goals in a game as a kid. No, I think Ron Evans left Essendon in 1961, and then Charlie Payne became yeah, Charlie full forward. Was so up. did did uh, John Common not like? Ron Evans at, at full forward? Uh, that's a bit of a curly one, I think. I, I don't think I really want to go into that, but uh, Ron was happy enough to leave Essendon yeah. in 61 and go over to Perth and play. Yeah. And uh, Kicked 100 goals over there. Yeah, he would have. Yeah, yeah. he was a good player over in Perth. Um, I don't think Ron and John Coleman saw eye to eye. Um, I'll leave it at that. Their I games think. were mm. definitely different when yes. they played. Yeah. Oh, they? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Did That's Johnny right. have a lot of influence on you how to play the position or did he leave you to your own devices? But Yeah, one of the greatest full forwards of all time. Mm. Oh, no, no, he used to give me a lot of advice. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, you know, I, I, I still think about some of the things he used to say to me when I was playing and, and I look at today's game and full forwards don't do what Coleman used to tell me to do. Um, you know, he used to tell me where to position myself if there was a ball coming into the goal square and so forth. The full forwards don't seem to do that these days. I, mm. I thought to myself, well, you can still learn a little bit from the oldies. You probably could coach there, you say? Oh, no, no. I've, I've added a dash at that for two no, or three years. No, I'm saying years. Johnny Coleman could. Oh, Coleman time. could, yeah. Any time. Yeah. Yep. Was he a, a fiery coach? Because he was a fiery player mm. and obviously mm. uh, got reported and missed out on grand finals for the Bombers as well, always had the reputation of being pretty tough and, uh, you know, wouldn't take no for an answer. He was a fiery coach. Yeah. I believe, you know, if you've got to spray off Carly, you you got to spray. And um, in no uncertain manner too. He, <laughs> and he yourself... didn't only just spray the players, he could spray the... Oh, the umpires and yeah, everybody. Right, yeah. Yeah, 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 so it's give amazing it to, to hear that because I always remember, when I say remember, that when you say John Coleman, John Coleman, the brilliant football, but I, it was just to hear that he was very fiery and aggressive no. as a full forward. I, look, he was, an, he was an aggressive sort of man because I yeah. worked for John yeah. in the hotel business and mm. um, I never saw John take one backward step in the pub even. He, uh, <laughs> you know, like if anyone come forward, he'd go to, to them and yeah. uh, he never took a backward step, that guy. What about the great full backs that you played on? Well, I always say the best full back I played on was Freddie Swift, who, who had an untimely yeah. end. And, yeah. um, Freddie was probably 5'11 and yeah. uh, 12, yeah, 12 yeah. and a half stone, I suppose. But, oh, gee, he was tough. He was a tough yeah. player. Was I he always the admired. Marked the ball behind the goal line? He was the player who marked the ball right on the goal line, Bob. <laughs> oh, he was magnificent. He, was, he would, didn't matter where you were, if you and his right, he would hit you. And when, yeah. you, when he hit you, he hit you hard. And uh, I always admired that guy. There's other guys I played on as, uh, that played full back and were supposedly tough, but you know, they were tough when they were behind you and belting you in the ear. And Any so names there, Ted? No, I'm not going to mention up. names. There's no, a lot no. of players get reputations like for? that, Bob, yeah. don't they? they uh, belting players behind you. No, there wouldn't have been a Collingwood player. No, there wouldn't have been a Collingwood, Collingwood captain. Yeah, yeah Collingwood uh, captain. Uh, no, I'm not going to say. <laughs> I'm going to incriminate Ted? myself. Wouldn't be the Bulldogs. No, no, no. The Bulldogs were all right. All right. We were good mates at the Bulldogs. Oh, yeah? Well, oh, where's, right. where's, where's Loss was at Carlton? Who was at Collingwood? Uh, yeah. um, t who played Terry Ford. Waters? Did Terry he play fullback? No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Potter played Teddy there for Potter. a little Teddy while. Potter. And, uh, little, there was a little guy. Is it Bain? Johnny Bain? Johnny Bain. No, not Johnny Bain. Johnny... Oh, I can't think of his name, but... As a matter of fact, I had a good day at Collingwood one day. I kicked 10 goals at Collingwood. No. What, Victoria oh, Park? Very yeah, Victoria and Park. Get out of the ground. Yeah, <laughs> and who was the president of the day? Um, Sherwin. Oh, Tommy Sherwin. Presented yeah. me with a football and I never even got three brown low votes for that game. He believe did. it or not. <laughs> How I many I've never liked did you get in your since. career, Ted, do you know? Brown low votes. Brown low votes. Uh, if I took my shoes off, I'd count them on you my fingers. You could count them. It wasn't too many. Because <laughs> no. I, I, you know, I wasn't an umpire. I, I spent too much with Coleman. I didn't like umpires very much either. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take a break, Ted. Stay with us uh, on that magnificent uh, chair, of course.
We'll come back because we want to talk about 1965 because mm. you missed out in 62 as an emergency. You're all warmed up and ready to go. But in 1965, you've kicked seven goals in a grand final. It's not easy to kick seven goals. Oh, yeah. It's got to be good, It's Kev. very, very it's gotta good. It's got to be very, very good, Doug, to do that. Plus, you kicked six goals in the previous final six as well. Six well, in, yeah, in the primary. against Collingwood. In the semi-final oh, against oh, Collingwood. Oh, and that's oh, not oh, easy, oh, kicking six did you goals. Did that too? Well, I think I did, Bob. Oh, <laughs> Back and uh, we're waxing lyrical here with Teddy Fordham on Grumpy Old Men. Crazy kick them Now, Bobby, this is where you got oh, grumpy you before the start doing? of the program because we want to talk about the 1965 final <laughs> series with Teddy Fordham. I wasn't in it too long. He played against the Cats in the first semi. In the first semi final. Now, that's that's what's Muck irritated you today, hasn't it? That's irritated Well, he went you out today. to centre forward, ruined the whole thing. <laughs> How many games did you actually kick that day, Ted? Uh, I think I had to kick three or four. And Only three or four yeah, that yeah. light day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. there was wasn't didn't suit me that day. <laughs> <laughs> so conditions weren't suitable. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, Tell us about the game against yeah. Collingwood. Well, that was a famous game. That was the uh, that was a game that um, John Somerville and Duncan Wright. Was, mm. Oh, I, would, I didn't say that, but <laughs> you know, Allegedly. we looked down the ground and poor old John was you know he, he was out like a cold. <laughs> uh, he was out cold. Fainted, and, um, yeah. Um, I don't think. At what stage saw of the it. game did that take place, Ted? I think it was in the. I think it was the. Might have been the second quarter. Second quarter. And it acted as a spur more than anything to us. Um, to see him laying, you know, flat out, and uh, I remember Frizzy going over to him and saying, "You're a beast." Frizzy was a funny man. He used to call peep players beasts. Beast? Oh yes. Yeah. yeah, we we Bluey Shelton and I. We used to try and teach him to swear and drink and all things <laughs> and things like that. But Frizzy wouldn't, you know. He'd say, "Well, you're a." Beast, and, and then Bluey would walk up, and you know, <laughs> yeah. he, he made up names, you know, and, and swear words. He, he'd just carry on after Frizzy would finish calling them beasts. And uh, um, but I think it was the second quarter, and um, we went from strength to strength. And Len Thompson played his first game. That first year. game. That's that right. was his first game. And he started um, too, didn't he? Uh, that's right. Pretty good. He Seven played a very days, good game. He started, yeah. And um, we had a very comfortable win against Collingwood. And then the following week, we went in as the outsiders again. But yeah. I was just thinking, uh, Ted, uh, if it happened before half time, obviously, Coleman, as you say, was a very fiery customer. You can just imagine what he was saying to the Essendon Ooh. players with John Somerville going down behind play, no one knowing what happened, no one ever saw the incident. There's mm. famous photographs of Duncan Wright standing over the top of uh, Somerville. So at half time, it must have been. You know, a lot of uh, anxious moments in the in the dressing rooms at that stage about coming out in the second half and some of them being knocked out. Well, getting back to that, it, did, it started from the ground because I remember Jimmy Carstairs, who was Coley's runner, he came out and he went to every player and he said, Coley is livid. He said, he said, you can do what you like. You can hit him with the bloody, you know, the grass, hit him with anything you can find. And uh, at half time, he, he said, now, I don't want anyone to go silly. I just want you to play good, hard football. You've got them done. Just keep the, you know, just keep the pressure on them, and and that's what we did. He wouldn't have had to say much to Bluey Shelton, would he? Oh no, no. Uh, what a great. How was Bluey? He uh, he's great. I had lunch with him on Sunday did too. Did you? Yeah. Well, yeah. If, if you're talking about rough and tough boys, oh, yeah, Bluey boy. Shelton, oh, wasn't he a marvel? Would Duncan Wright have played the next week if Collingwood had won? Do you think? Well, oh, no one saw what happened. Like, there, was well, no been asked. Well, there was no report of anything. Yeah. No. In those days, if you never got reported by the umpire, you never got. Then there, there was, was no, no, there was there was no, no inquiry or anything. There was no inquiry no. as amazing, such. Yeah. And being only one umpire, you, you used to get away with murder mm. in those days. Mm. And some terrible things used to happen in those days. And then you played the Saints. You knocked yeah. over the Saints in 65. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we knocked over the Saints. They were red-hot favourites, St Kilda, going into that game. Everyone wanted St Kilda to win their first ever premiership. Yep. That's true. And no one was barring for the Bombers unless you happened to be, you know, an Essendon supporter because the whole football Essendon. community just loved the, yeah. the Cinderella story that St Kilda was about to win a premiership. That's right. And, you know, they had Baldock at ten half forward and Stewart in the centre. They had a good side. I played on Bob Murray. Yeah. Oh, good There's some players there, um, Ted, just taking that big mark in front of Bob Murray. Now, now, let's look at this look beautiful this. kicking action. Now, just have okay. a look at this. Hey, gee, a big oh. oh, yeah, straight through the middle. That's no, a big kick. That's, 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 that's oh, yeah, 60 yeah. metres. What about Bob Murray? He must have loved playing because Bob used to like going for his marks. Did, was that a weakness of Bob at the time that he. Yeah, well, everybody well, went for their marks probably in those days. Well, good well mark on this front. particular day, I, I had had a good day and um, Bob Murray lined up on me and they shifted him, I think, just after half time and then Verdon Howe came down and played on me. Shit. And then they moved him. 
because I, at that stage I didn't know how many goals I'd kicked and it was only when I came off the ground I, they said, oh, you've equaled the um, goal record. kicking record. So which... you would have won the Norm Smith if they were given Norm Smith. Now, so now, there's easily, another easily, story. There's now. another yeah. story. <laughs> <laughs> we did, I did receive the reciprocal. Um, oh, you got one? Uh, okay. So, uh, Norm Smith and Kevin got one too, did you not, Kevin? What was he that? won one, uh, Norm Smith. Was yeah, he won, you know, he won 80. You won 80. 80. Oh, this retrospective. Oh, this retrospective. This is when, retrospective. This is Sorry, when they actually uh, did a thing a few years ago for the, before 1979. They went back and actually That's right. gave the tapes to certain people and said, you know, give us some sort of judgment. So you won the... You won 65. retrospective in 65. Yeah, now when did there you was no your... medal or anything like that, but mm, that was just, yeah. it was just an opinion piece. Did you do yeah, leg well, weights, Teddy? Well, I'm looking at your no, legs here. No, no, I was, pretty, I was pretty big in the thighs. That's right. Did Teddy torpedoes? You kicked like torps and flat, not drop punch for golf? No, no. In those <laughs> Look days, at Johnny, Johnny <laughs> Bird having a go at <laughs> In those Dupin. days, the, um, the drop punch was hardly heard of. Yeah, no one no, knew yeah, about it. Oh, we used to even kick drop kicks for golf. What's what happened here? Is Carl giving you one? The ump is saying, all right, go back, have your kick. I think it was, yeah, big Carl. Yeah, What's he's... Johnny doing? Johnny Burt. <laughs> he was the... Uh... Yeah, Johnny Burt. Sure. Johnny Burt was vice-captain in those days. He, there was a beautiful him. kick came in from Jack Clark there. Oh, it was yeah. a great kick, Jack Clark, wasn't oh, it? Oh, he's magnificent. He, he, probably John Burt was just as good as him. Who's the best you've played with, Ted Edessenden? Is that hard to answer that question? Probably Clarky. Clarky, the best yeah. bomber. Yeah, I think Jack Clark was the best player I've played with at Essendon. The best player I played against was the old EJ. EJ Witten? Yeah, he's always been my favourite. Yeah. Did he play on you at fullback? EJ. Uh, when I went onto the ball a few times, he, I used to play on him and um, oh, it was great fun. Great. He was a great bloke. Ted Whitten. Have a beer after the game. Oh, uh, yeah. And my other favourite was uh, the chimp, Bobby Skilton. Bobby Skilton. I just love Bobby Skilton. He was a great player. Well, you've just taken another mark in front of Bob Murray. You must have got sick of kicking goals this day, Ted. Yeah, well, like, I could have kicked more than you, Kevin, if I had kicked straight, I think. I, I think there was seven what? I think there was seven four, seven five or something, yes. But, um, no, it was a great day, a good day to remember. And That's uh, uh, Brian Sampson, isn't it? Big Brian Sampson? Uh, yes, Sambo played a good game that day. Everyone well, expected St Kilda to win that premiership. Mm, uh, yeah. There was a bit of a, a lull went over the ground because you, you dominated the grand final. You, we you did. took we, it by surprise. We were never ever going to get beaten, I don't <laughs> think, on that particular day. And uh, you get back to the Coleman um, coaching. He was very good mates with Elf Brown in those days. Yes, he was, uh, he was Brown. And I reckon mate. he used to use Elf Brown very, very well. Because after the Collingwood game, uh, and I'd kick six, Friday, you know, the Friday Her Herald came out before the grand final and, and Elf Brown wrote that I'd played above myself on the Saturday and, you know, I wouldn't do it again the next Saturday. And to this day, I reckon Coley got him to write that. Uh. Because he said to me, he said, have a look at this, Ted. And this was on the Saturday, he said, go out there and then tell him what to do with the piece of paper, he said, after the game. And I, I really reckon he used to use Elf Brown to, um, to get Reverse blokes psychology. Up. Yeah, yeah. But he well, was Carly used to write for the Herald, didn't he? He wrote for the and, Herald, yeah, yeah and him right. and Elf were like that. Yeah, they Very to... good mates, yeah. yeah. What was the feeling like after the grand... We, we talk about it, and a lot of people say excitement. How did you feel after that grand final? Because I was your just... emergency in the earlier one... I was just exhausted after the game. Exhausted. Time. I remember we went to some place in the city, and it was it was pretty warm in this. No, I forget what it was called. It was up the top of Burke Street, and um, I was just exhausted. The season, had, you know, I'd just run my race, and okay. uh, I didn't really enjoy the Saturday night at all. I did on the Sunday. My <laughs> it was great. It, but, it must um, have been a great disappointment, therefore, when uh, John Common announced he was retiring from coaching the Bombers. Yeah, it was. We, we knew it was on the cards because of his illness. He had thrombosis in yeah. his leg and um, we knew that he wasn't going. We tried to talk him into staying, but um, he just felt that it was going to impair his health and he said, no, I've got to give it away. Mm. And it was, a, it was very unfortunate. That, and he uh, died young, didn't he? What, 42 right. years of age? Uh, 42 shock. or 43. Mm. Yeah, I was working for him at the time and... It wasn't he good memory. He finished up with a few hotels, didn't he? He, was, he, he was, did very well. I was in the Victoria Hotel in Brunswick for yeah. him and he, he had the uh, Germana Hotel at the time, that's where mm. he died. And, that's right. Um, I got a phone call, I think it was 12 o'clock, Ted Rippon rang me and said John's in a bad way. Mm. And um, 3 o'clock in the morning I had to pack my two kids up and go over to see his wife and give mm. him the bad news and it wasn't a... No. Mm. wasn't a very good... Uh, so you were evening. very close to John, weren't you? Yeah, well, I was. Very, yeah. very close. Yeah, yeah we, I worked for him for four or five years and... Had a lot of fun with him. And Ted, do you go to the football nowadays? Yes, I go four or five times a year, maybe six times a year. See, isn't it? I go to see the Bombers. Yeah. 
Just finally, 1968, uh, you got through to the grand final. Jack Clark took over as, uh, as coach. Uh, the only time in history that the, the losing side has kicked more goals than the winning side. How did you come out of that grand final? You would have played on a pretty tough full back in Wes Lofts. I didn't play full forward that year, Kev. I was, I was, an, um, I was an on baller in those days. Non Jack Clark took over as coach and he, he probably shed eight or nine pounds off me. And I got to the stage where I used to be able to get the ball and run and have a few bounces. I was that fit. And um, I played on the ball and um, Ron Barassi, he didn't like my style of play and he did call me a bad name there one day and told me what he thought of me. Um, I suppose I can say it was bludger, you know, it's not a very nice thing for no, Barassi no, no, to call no, me, no, but that's, that's what he called me. <laughs> and um, he played Sergio Silvani on me as a tagger. Now, it took me a few years to work out what a tagger was, but uh, to this day, I really think he put Serge there. Serge was a very, very good player and a mm. tough player. Mm. He just sat on me all day, and um, I didn't have a very good day that day. And then my friend Wesley, I think he broke three or four of my ribs in the last quarter, and I, I came off the ground. <laughs> yeah. And that and was, it, was just about the end of the career. And that, yeah, I didn't play many games in '69. I had a bad back injury, and um, that. You know, I think it limited me to half a dozen games or eight games in 69 and I gave it away after that. Yeah. Ted, it's been great to catch up. Sure, we we catch up uh, on a regular basis. Mm. Uh, all those who kick seven goals in the grand final. Oh, oh, yeah, and, lunch uh, we have, we have a luncheon uh, every year, so we, we catch up many times yeah, during the course well, of the year. Teddy and I catch up because he got me the sack. <laughs> <laughs> Ted, thanks for joining us on Grumpy Old Men. Pleasure, Kevin. Thanks. Teddy yeah, Ford, one of the greats of the Bombers. Coming up is a man who absolutely...